right. So, big changes. <laughs> um, as I was not really sure how I want this part here to end up, the detail with that demonic face on there, uh, we decided to paint one side uh, off cam. Also, it's, it's quite funny, we mentioned that as well a little bit earlier. Uh, it's quite funny when you paint just one part, you think, like, oh, I'm almost done. Then you turn it around, like, ah, only halfway there. And there's so much more to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, as these sides are identically, um, we will just show it on that side. It's also easier to reach here for me, the brush and the camera. I think it's worth mentioning as well that the, the reason that you've done the other side with the kind of difficult angles is not because there's any particular special trick to it. It's really because um, Ben would have to turn the figure in such a way that it would be difficult for, for us to see uh, on, on the screen. Yeah, and also uh, regarding the, uh, the angle of light uh, here, we will do just the very same on the other side. There are some people that uh, would highlight the other side opposite to that, so if that part here is light, that would definitely go for a dark, uh, right. dark spot there. But I would do just the very same because I think for flat weapons like that, this is just the easiest and also um, the way that it looks quite natural actually because you turn it around and you don't think like, oh, okay, why, why is this face as it's facing upwards mm -hmm. dark? So, um, For the non-metal steel, we will um, stick to our very simple recipe of the... Um, Dark, Dark sea, sea blue, blue. <laughs> Dark sea blue and white and just for some uh, tonal variation we will also glaze in with uh, some tank brown with that at the very end. So I'm mixing a small gradient of Dark sea blue and white on the palette just so I have some in hand to correct possible mistakes. And if you're uh, if you're watching at home with friends and you you want to you want to, to uh, uh, take part, maybe you could make a drinking game. Every time Ben says dark sea blue, you have to take a drink. <laughs> I think you wouldn't uh, standing long. Dark sea blue, dark sea blue, dark sea blue. <laughs> All right, so uh, just to make sure we are lighting the same spots, you can see we have a transition from dark sea blue to nearly white on all the single planes. And I considered the middle blade just one plane, so it's dark up here and lighter up there, so I have a transition from light to dark there. Mm -hmm. So I know I will have the same here, so um, I can start with the on the upper part here from that main plane. And just pure dark sea blue. Here also our small transition on the uh, wet palette comes in handy because we can just go and go lighter and lighter Okay, I never, little, be, I never would have thought of that. Yeah, it's it's quite quite a nice and easy trick because you can just uh, um, pick it from the right spot, and it would be quite annoying to actually do the transition over the whole thing and then In correct those, everything yeah. again. It's a really good tip. So what was uh, we have a moment? What um, can can you talk me through exactly the the thought process behind how you've decided on what colors you're using for the axe head? Yeah, I think the uh, usually I'm uh, usually I'm, I'm quite sure about uh, the uh, the my color setup, so to say, mm -hmm. um, but. With some small elements like like the the X head, sometimes I'm not decided when I when I really 
reach actually the part and I'm like, ah, okay, this is actually quite nice because when we take a look at all the details here, uh, that is quite quite actually an, a nice little little weapon with that demonic head and um, so I thought, okay, I, actually I want to put a little bit more focus on that and do some nice demonic color transitions mm -hmm. with a bit of like glowing red on one side, a blue reflection on the other. Um, because he's he's not just a good guy, right? He yeah, hasn't yeah, just yeah. got a regular metal weapon. Yeah, this yeah, guy's got, so got like, uh, demon blood going yeah. through. Some horrible <laughs> stuff happening. <laughs> exactly, and I, don't know, I look. We took a look at the uh, painting guidebook that comes with the uh, with the Age of Sigma game, mm -hmm. and actually was kind of disappointed that it's just completely golden everything. It's just it, it, it amazes me how beautiful this accent is, and I was I was just thinking to myself. Uh, three days ago before we started this process that's exactly what I would have done yeah. exactly I just would have gone with one solid colour and just thought oh thank god that's out of the way it's done I can move <laughs> on to something else um, but yeah, it's, but it's, it's it's kind of really eye opening to see that something like that with all these tiny details you, it, it's it's such a big focal point it, it's worth taking the time yeah, to do something like yeah, that yeah because look look the the X head here is as big as the whole torso mm -hmm. and if you just like paint this gold this is like of totally, totally uninteresting. You, you know, you, when your eyes wander around the miniature, you, and it will be gold. You're like, ah, okay. But here you see, oh, nice details. That's a demonic guy. Mm. You know, it's, uh, it's actually it's interesting. You bring up the subjects of a of a focal point. Um, something that that was taught to me, and I don't know if you agree. With this is that with the with any with anything with any um, creature, the main focal point is typically the face, because we as humans we we go straight there. Yeah. Um, but I was told as a miniature painter that the trick is to try and create other interesting focal points around the miniature so that your eyes will instantly go to the face, but you're, you're instantly drawn away from it to other areas. I think you know, not necessarily need to be driven away from the face if you just get the face just on spot. It's perfect to be drawn to the face first mm -hmm. because it transmits a lot of the story of the miniature. Um, but yeah, it's good to have like at least three different stages on how you explore a project. So one is from uh, like one and a half meters away mm -hmm. or like two meters, like the, oh, my army in the, on the, on the table right. distance. Right. Or even on a competition, for example, on game stays or on other competitions, usually the first cut is been made by the judges just walking by the showcase and saying, okay, this peaks out, this peaks out. Right. That's a special one. So the contrast really needs to be on spot for that. And that is like the first stage. Then it has to work when you hold it in hand. That's the second stage. And the third, and I think also very important steps that you actually have like a second focus point, focal point or a um, like a second story in a diorama or like a little, like a little funny moment where people that uh, spend some time with the project, you, you kind of um, reward them with something. Right. For spending the time with the project. And if you explore a project that way, it will always go on in the mind of the person because he's more involved because he's looking at your mom like, oh, I discovered that. And it's like an emotional bound with your mm -hmm. your project. So that is very important to, to have something beside the face happening. Okay, so for the uh, transition on the, uh, on the main blade, it's, it's quite okay like that. Um, it will change in contrast and also when we add little scratches, but for now it's just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and keep in mind where our light is painted and do the same here. We have to get a good angle for our brush. So I see, okay, here's... Because I want to touch that rather with the side of the brush. Maybe it was a bit too much white on the brush. Okay, we need to let that dry to really see what's what's 
going on. Yeah, quite nice. I think once it's dry, I will just uh, go over the dark side a little with the pure t um, dark sea blue. <laughs> Not tank brown. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And to contrast that edge, we need to highlight this edge here. Just place some white. Something we were um, talking about yesterday off camera. Your um, this. this Miniature has like a, I mean, we've got you've got some scratches uh, dotted around to show he's had some wear and tear, but nothing too extreme. Um, if if you wanted to to create some sort of blood effects, you could use uh, Tamiya Clear Red, uh, little little drops of it, right, to 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 give that effect of, of blood and gore and that sort of thing. Yeah, it's quite nice because it's quite glossy and you get that rich, real blood look mm -hmm. and. Uh, if you just like sprinkle it over the brush or blow to the brush to get some fine sprinkles, um, that can just create an amazing effect. And a little disclaimer: uh, I'm sure Ben and, paint, and Michael at Painting Leader accept no responsibility for any uh, any Tamiya clear red <laughs> going over the desk, <laughs> and over the walls, or covering your minute, your beautifully painted miniature in those little spots. Yeah. But I, I can say. Um, I, ha I have tried that personally at home and it, it really does work. Um, it's, it's actually, you, you mentioned yesterday, it's because when you spray the little dots, they might hit areas that you probably wouldn't put little dots on, but because they're so random, it actually ends up looking more natural and you yeah. get a better effect. Yeah, definitely, because it's not, you know, if he would hit with, with an axe like that, he would hit his enemy, you know, there would be actually blood all over. So, um, and when you paint blood effects, you always be like very careful and here a bit, there a bit, mm -hmm. there are two dots. But um, the sprinkling it with Tamiya Clear is quite uh, with Tamiya Clear Red is quite cool. If you just cover important parts like the face with the tissue, for example, right, and then just give it a blow on the on the uh, X hat, mm -hmm. and uh, because it's less more controlled, it looks more natural. And it's because you don't have to think about every single small dot. Oh, and definitely do not under any circumstances lick your brush. <laughs> yeah, wise words. Probably do that just one time in your life. Yeah, we, <laughs> we said this yesterday. You do it once, <laughs> never yeah. again. say with um with with the effect that you're doing for this normal metallic metal on the the axe if you were to say to substitute the colors and maybe go for like a really um like a, a more saturated blue mm -hmm. you could keep you could go as if it was like a frost blade something icy yeah um, i think just, just the same technique but substituting the colors yeah i think if i would go for an icy look i would work on one and more saturated but also create like diagonal uh, blendings on top that are even sharper so it looks more crystalline you know? mm -hmm. or even red for something warm or green or purple or something to, to give like a, a different crystal effect yeah that could be very interesting also uh, I think something like stone could also be quite interesting to make like a stone blade with uh, small cracks and a bit of moss on there mm -hmm. because it's quite a chunky weapon yeah. you place is that for for scratches yeah, yeah, ah, cool. it's because, yeah. because I actually don't want to put any effort in 
lighting that area. So I thought just some few dots are quite nice because they pick up that rough edge from yep. here. And a little bit black and dark sea blue. I will just do some scratches here. This is like, I mean, it's a nice non-metal, but it's it's a rather simple non-metal, and the scratches help also to break up the surface and create a little bit more uh, interest on in such a such such a large area. Uh huh. It's important to do them when you when you actually done with the the. Um, transition of the blue but before you add the uh, the glazes of the tank brown because that will make them look a lot more uh, in the surface because you just simply uh, change the the level of contrast actually uh, with one go of the, uh, the glaze Would you would would it be fair to say for for someone like me that would be that's that gets quite nervous when trying to do very tiny fine lines that that really it's just about making sure you've you've got the miniature in a nice grip you're you're sitting very comfortably and you have a nice nice pose and it just you know rather than than, than you know trying to do some weird angle and, and uh, yeah and I um, one's got got a quite a good tip if you want to do like free hands. Uh, or very fine lines. It's quite good to take the brush and just on a piece of paper do your signature because you don't have to think about the you don't have to think about the movement of your signature because it's very inside mm -hmm. and because you don't have to think about it, your hand already knows what he, what it, uh, it's doing. Mm -hmm. So you just take uh, your brush, with some paint, and on a piece of paper until the line is even and fine. Just Repeat, repeat, repeat. Mm -hmm. And once it's fine, you just take the brush to the miniature just next to it and do the final lining on the miniature because then you're already in a, like in a good set. Yep. Okay, so let's go for some tank brown. The tank brown is very uh, intense. The, the thickness is very, very vibrant and very fine. I used to paint a lot with uh, Scotch Brown from the Old Game Social range, but as that disappeared, um, I was looking for another warm brown tone. Mm -hmm. And actually, the tank brown is even nicer um, because it's. Oh wow! This is wow! If, if you're listening, I this is this is like <laughs> serious, this is big deal, big stuff happening right now. Yeah, because it's um, it's clearer and um, still more vibrant, actually. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that. I don't. I don't know actually how to say, but it's it's m like you don't have the milkiness. You know, it's not that opaque. Okay. Because you can thin it down. It's almost like a like a like a ink. It dries off a little bit to satin, uh, which is quite nice for some some of the shadow effects. And typically, most most. Um Miniature, I mean, typically most acrylic paint is is does have a satin finish, um, unless, unless you start going with the scale seventy five and then you get into the super matte, yeah, the super matte effect, or also some of the Andrea colors tend to dry extremely matte. I tried some of those the other day. Actually, those are those are nice. I tried some of the flesh tones. Yeah, um, so the the really flesh is pretty cool. Um, they have like black that is extremely flat. It almost looks gray because it's that flat. Oh really? To, uh, oh, is it like the the scale seventy five black? Because that's, yeah. that's <laughs> hardcore. <laughs> I painted a Space Marine, uh, a Blood Angel Death Company, and that black in it. And I oh, so many times people were just like, "How have you done this? <laughs> what technique? It just swallows light." I was like, "It's just the scale seventy five paint." No, like, really, you must have done something. It's velvet. <laughs> <laughs> More intense, actually, up here. So, uh, how come you're you're glazing with um with the the tank brown on something something like this? Is it because you're just you're you're giving it the the cold warm contrast? Um. Yeah. Plus, I wanted actually to uh, to end up being too blue. 
and if you if you mix the uh, the um, dark sea blue with a bit of white, it it end up being quite a nice blue, but it still is pretty blue. And to get it more interesting and also um, to get it a bit desaturated, it's quite good to combine it with the tank brown because that up and uh, adds up like almost black up here. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's quite nice to also maximize the contrast. Looks really nice, and um, yeah, I, I mean it will change quite a bit once we start uh, adding the gold here and but, the, yeah, and the skull because uh, here the the separation is really nice because here all these little edges mm -hmm. will bring quite some nice little sparkling effect in just in contrast with that dark edge up here. Would you say that's something to always keep in mind that sometimes like if you if you're doing this section by section, it's to always remember that you have that that other bit as well next to it and that that can add that extra that extra bit you know that extra oomph to the miniature yeah the, yeah definitely you, you you should also keep that in mind like for we have in this figure we have a lot of these contrasting elements like the red and the gold together mm -hmm. that keep that more green to make it even stronger in contrast mm -hmm. stuff like that you should keep that in mind also here the where we separated the silver blade from the the gold is just more or less imaginary. The the line here, I just painted that in. Right. Just to to have like my own material separation. For the gold, we will again go for some of the Japanese uniform with black. If. Uh, for you guys out there, this is too green. <laughs> <laughs> I was guys just thinking, uh, should I say something? You like, might, uh, might punch me. Um, no, because uh, yesterday Michael entered the room. He's like, okay, but that is that is too green. He's like, no, no, it's very good like that. No, it's too green. <laughs> so I was thinking about it. It's too green uh, quite a bit when I was at home. Um, and I looked at the pictures on my smartphone and I, and I thought, no, no, it's just for me, that is really like perfect but I guess it's also personal taste um, if it's too green uh, for you at home just adjust the the color mix add mm -hmm. a bit of uh, warm brown in there or, or if, if you just found this video perhaps go go back a video and go to the the, the first one uh, yeah there's a there's a touch warmer gold not metallic like yeah quite a, quite a bit warmer so um, there is a if you're looking for recipes there it's a good place <laughs> to find one we actually said the, the as much last night. Actually, um, we were joking about about the the green non metallic metal, and uh, I, I I I like it actually. Um, I I think because the 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 Eternals that those are the good guys, mm -hmm. and you have these chaos guys, which are the bad guys, and they're, they're supposed to be undead. Yeah, you know, so so it it makes sense that that the the metal should reflect that and, and have that kind of more slightly pallid. Um, sickly feel to it, you know. Yeah, I agree. And I think it's it's really good to play with that, and like it, it just creates a a different atmosphere if you change the tones. I mean, because of the high contrast, you would not doubt that that is gold, right? Or something like oh yeah, yeah that's funky green metal. Um, so I think you're quite free actually to adjust the colors the way you want if you have the contrast just on spot. Okay, um, again, here it's quite amazing. All this part here is, all this part, the lower part here is quite co covered by the cloak. We will just give that later on two layers of, of base color and a bit of highlight. Uh -huh. um, but we don't need to put a lot of work in there because it's really not visible. Mm -hmm. It comes back to what we said before, if, if it's like a display figure and, and, so, and a judge is going to pick it up and turn it at every possible angle, then yes. But... If it's for your army and it's it's on the table, I mean, realistically, you're you're never gonna see that angle, yeah, really. And that there's no sense in 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 flogging yourself like trying to get it this absolutely amazing perfect blend, and then you're just <laughs> yeah, really you're insane just, just, just when when you when really the, no one's gonna put see up it. the cloak and you're like ah oh, nice. So yeah, just save. <laughs> yeah, I can see that coming down on the table. Someone placing it. Up. Oh, by the way, I've magnetized this. This going to take it all off. See the arm. See the back. <laughs> yeah, like a like a dress doll. Oh, dude, that would be a really good idea, actually. 
Is, is that a new idea for some figures, customizable ones? You can take off the, the outside. <laughs> Maybe. Actually, it would be quite kind of hilarious. Any miniature makers out there, if you're listening, this is a painting Buddha right there. You can't have that. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's always good to have our legal department in here. <laughs> Yeah, that thing down there is kind of like a bone. So try to get some nice uh, round highlights and also just, uh, highlight the texture that is on there. It's, it's interesting you mentioned that. We, we talked a lot about that yesterday off, off camera, how, how to uh, approach this axe because it's with these chaos guys, it's they, they start to mutate. And, and the, the metal and the, and so the, the metal and the organic starts to mix. And, and how best to show that on, on this figure. Yeah. Uh, it's true. It's, you always have to, to think like, okay, especially with these demonic weapons, I think it's quite nice because you can just play around and give them like your own interpretation. Here, it's quite important these to have these small round highlights here on the rounded side of the bone, um, because that is just how the light would would be reflected on there. Mm -hmm. We were we were talking yesterday. Actually, are they are they spikes or are they bones? I think I think they're like part of the part of the bone, uh, a bit like <laughs> yes said that yes a bit like on the on the sawfish. Yep, um, not a barracuda, <laughs> not not a barracuda, <laughs> not a piranha, <laughs> but a sawfish. No, but it seems to be like uh, small spikes out of the the bone. Uh, but we will have them still in a, in a different material, just to add a little bit of interest there. So, first black then. Some white highlights to make it a bit more glossy, and a tiny bit of the uh, the red we've also used for the armor. Just we're just glazing it here over the mid area. But there was there was another reason for the for the red, right? For the, um, uh, with the the skull. Yeah. Um, you you were talking about how how. Um, you wanted to give it that kind of evil look and, and as if you know, again we were saying about how the, the flesh and the, and the metal is like combining. Yeah, and um, how you have like something that is somewhat metal and somehow alive, so I wanted to have like a like the demonic bloom from the inside, so mm -hmm. um, it's quite nice to repeat the red here that we will have later on on the, the skull as well. Mm -hmm. And talking of which, we will just do the red highlight here now, and uh, therefore I'm mixing again some of the corn base red. Do we have the corn base? No, it's Mephiston red. Um, some of the Mephiston red with some black, and just paint it on one side. You could either decide to use the same side or another side. Uh, might be interesting to actually hide the lower uh, to to paint the lo lower side here in red to make it look not as if it would be like a red light shining from the top. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. So um. it's um it's interesting actually. Yes, yesterday when you when you d uh, did the, the the test on the other side, you um, painted the non-metallic gold first. Mm -hmm. Was that because you you were doing it slightly differently because you were playing around more to, to get to see if the effect worked yeah uh, I wasn't sure actually if if that's going, going to end up uh, looking the way I, I would like it to be or uh, how it's in my mind so mm -hmm. I was playing around a bit with uh, to see how to, how to blend in the, the gold with uh, the with the red so right now I'm already Sure that that it should look good in the end. It, yeah, <laughs> or it, it definitely at, does look good. At, at least I hope. <laughs> so um, 
I'm I'm just more free to to adjust things to. If you're at home watching this, you don't think it looks good. Turn off your screen. Go away. We we don't <laughs> want you. <to>. Go away. <laughs> so I'm now mixing some of the uh, gold with uh, some of the well, not gold, some of the um, Japanese uniform with some red to get this area here quite a bit redder. And so, so so you're adding some of the uniform. To the red, so it, it doesn't look too too uh, it, it ties it together. Yeah, because otherwise, if you just went with straight red, it would look too strong. Yeah, yeah it would look a bit like a, a OSL effect. Maybe if I just go for pure red on there, it would. Ah, uh, uh, oh, I see. What too okay, strong. Yeah, so I'm blending it more like in the in the larger area here. I'll add highlights later on and go more intense on on some areas. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you can see I've pulled it up here also under the red highlights quite a bit to the sides of the with the red. If if you if this is um if you're just getting into painting, I think something that's worth mentioning when you see what Ben's just done there is you're 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 pulling the stroke into where it would be the, the deepest part of the colour. Mm -hmm. Because when you, you lift off the brush that's where you, you tend to leave a more amount of pig you get. Yeah, the, the pigments the collect area. there, yeah. and yeah, exactly. Yeah, always mind the direction of the brush movement and where you want the pigments to gather. So now I'm just going for some pretty strong white dots, and I'll just blend them in with a bit of red while they're still wet. Maybe you're not a quick, like um, you make a mistake and it's not quite quick enough, uh, you can always go over and glaze it to, to soften it down. Yeah, definitely. Um, a glaze is a, uh, sounds stupid, but a, a glaze is quite a, quite a strong weapon because even if the blending does not look good at all, with just with a few glazes you can save it actually. Mm -hmm. So you preserve some of the work that you've previously done previously. So then it's quite good. Red. At the moment, I'm just uh, glazing to the side here with uh, some dark sea blue. Just on the other side of the skull. At least the this side here. Maybe I'm going for a bit more red here on the top. But and that's that's just pure dark sea blue. Yeah. Yep. But quite thin. For the uh, main reflex here on the top, we will uh, go for some lower brush. Be careful not to have too much color on the brush. I really love the sax. I really, really am digging the sax. I just, it's, it's, yeah, wonderful. Really wonderful. Thanks, man.
I have to hold my hand up. I was saying this to Michael last night uh, when we went out to, to eat some, some extremely tasty chicken. If you visit Berlin, there's a lovely chicken place just around the corner. Um, but when you first, first started doing the, the red on at the top with the skull, yeah, um, and you, you, you were even asking me, Doug, like, what do you think? Um, I was thinking, God, I don't know, how can I tell Ben Comets what to do? And Jesus. Um, <laughs> But and you're like no 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 really really what you think and I was like well it, it like the 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 technical skill of it is really nice but but maybe it, it's a bit bit weird it, it's like you would have to explain why it's red yeah um, but then when you you came lower down and you, you did the little bones coming out the outside and and, and glazed that with it I was like ah it just tied it together and it made sense um, yeah it's 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 a really beautiful axe yeah sometimes it's just a single line that makes a difference. Uh, if something works or not. So we will try to also pull these here more onto the surface. Yeah, and when you when you started to add those lines uh, on the other side, it just did, yeah, it, it brought everything together. Just saying, just a couple of strokes because there was a brief second where it looked like the skull had like a Van Dyke um, yeah. <laughs> beard, and then you just that couple of strokes, and it just it, it smoothed out again. Yeah, that's the the power of glazes. Really, just one glaze with the medium tone, and it's gone. And something like a glaze, it's really not not something to be afraid of because the the paint is so thin that it's very it's quite difficult to ruin something with a glaze. Would would you agree with that? Yeah, definitely. I mean, if you have a very light uh, underground, like a, if you paint a bust and you have the the um, the cheekbone and you have the highlight there and everything is set and you want to glaze in some reds, mm -hmm. it's still a tricky moment because um, everything is so visible on a on a light underground. Right. So. Uh, Either you look extremely thin, or you could even go for oil colors, or use something with a retarder. But uh, yeah, I just try to get it in. In it's better to try it in several thin glazes than get it right in the first go. Just have some very very uh, light color on here, and it's not pure white, so I still have some like room on the top mm -hmm. to, to add some final highlight. But I'm just picking out all these lines here for the edges. All the edges that are facing upwards. See, not here, not there, but this one. Uh -huh. So here, not all the way here, just do the things I erased a tiny bit, but all the way here. And then will you come back with the pure white and add that tiny little dot at the, yeah. the, the sharp point, so. the real highest. Yeah, it looks like that. I think what's, what, what I really love about these videos is that even if, say, you don't sit down with the same figure, sit down and go through the entire process painting it exactly the same, there'll always be some some little thing, some little tip or technique that, that you take away and it, it gets put into your toolbox and you're yeah. going to use it again. Yeah, I like the, I actually like the, the to, to, have, to think of it as a toolbox. Because that is exactly also what Matt and me always talking with, with people. It's better to just improve your the tools that you have than just thinking in like fixed recipes and stuff. It's mm -hmm. just good to have something. Okay, I think I seen something. It works this and that way. I can do that with a different color, or I can use this glaze here for that. And just, yeah. Uh, so it's 
so this is really really a nice thing about the videos plus you can re repeat it and repeat it and repeat it's it that, that that's a very good point actually um we, we were saying this actually the other day in the office um when i attempted to to do one of the bases from the the basing dvd and um i, I watched it once uh, the the first section the beginner section mm -hmm. and i was just so like oh wow that's, that's, i love this it's beautiful i, I love the 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 colors you had going on and I thought I'm going to do this I actually have all of the material I'm going to do this so I, I watched it a second time through uh, once I finished the second time I got all of the materials ready I baked them and I put I had the paints there palette was ready and I was, I was focused I'm going to sit down start to finish do this yeah. um, and then just had had, had the video running and, and what's really useful is you can you can stop rewind go back um, and I, I did that a lot um, with the the wet and wet stage Mm -hmm. um, for the for the colors. Yeah, I think it's even more comfortable actually to to do that on cam in on your own in your own place because even when you go to a, like a classical workshop, you cannot annoy someone saying, "Okay, can you repeat it? Can you repeat yep. it? Can you yep. repeat it?" But sometimes it's really good to see things like ten times to get really get an idea mm -hmm. of how the brush movement works or. So you can see I've um, brightened the lower side here quite a bit to get a, a small look to, to that. And um, also he here on the, on the lower side too, because I want this uh, to be like a bit like the, the, the blade, so we have like, like a general transition on the, over the whole thing. Sure. Um, bring it up here a tiny bit. With a bit more black in the mix for the upper edge here. I love how you just did that on that tiny little, uh, that tiny little uh, arrow almost coming off from the side. You just kind of—it was like you filled it in with the glaze, but made sure you left all the lights in it. It's just like, oh my god, <laughs> such beautiful control. <laughs> We need to go quite dark up here, so... Actually, coming back to what we were just saying about, um, about with the advantage with, um, with a video, you, um, you can stop and you can rewind. Um, but then again, the advantage with a class is that, that you, you can't always stop and say, can you, you repeat, do this again, but you can always ask questions about yeah. the technique. Um, however, some, something that you guys do, which, which I really love, is that you guys are quite open. You have like the Slack 24-hour chat. Um, there's, there's some other stuff which I can't really mention, but there's some more plans coming. Um, when, when, you, when you buy into the, the Painting Buddha products, you, you get that. You, you can ask questions. It's not just like you buy the video and you can watch it again and again, but... Yeah. If there is something that you wanted to ask, you can, or, or yeah. you can, you you can do what I'm doing here and, and come and visit. And if if you you go for the multi pass, uh. yeah. Plus, you you have just the you can also just write on Facebook, uh, comment on the pictures, and we try to get all the questions answered. Mm -hmm. It's it's like we try to to have it as uh, open and as natural as possible, a bit like a ongoing workshop all yeah. the time. Maybe the questions won't get answered within the hour. Yeah, because you know, we have to be realistic. It's I can say um, it really is eye opening the amount of work that goes into these videos. It, it's really not just a couple of cameras set up and Ben just sitting painting for a couple of hours and then Michael posts it on YouTube. There is a lot of work that goes into these things. <laughs> yeah, just the the also the like the the graphics, the communication, the. Packing of the products. S sitting watching you do some of the graphics, I was like, wow, I didn't realize how much you have to do. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, just uh, creating a, like a different video overlay for each and every video. I mean, it's something that you would not necessarily need, but it's something that makes the product look a lot more, I would say, professional or polished because it just changes... Also, the atmosphere of the video. Mm -hmm. It's 
So I just added some some scratches. And <clears throat> For small elements like the spike here on top, it's really good to to do that blending with the side of the brush. I'm holding it in a very awkward angle, angle actually, actually, to show it in in the camera. That's the bad side. It's, it's but you have to do that, right? for the for the camera. But yeah. Um, The other one will be a bit easier here. And this this comes back to, to what we were talking about in the, the first chapter. Always move the miniature. Don't move your body or move your, your brush yeah. hand. This part of the skull here to be a bit more intense red um, because on the other side it's a bit more vibrant mm -hmm. and I like that rather glowing glowing effect. So first of all, light. Then some of the Pure Memphis in red. So I'm just adding like a secondary smaller light here in the, in the red. And make sure that it's dry so you can really judge the transition. Yeah, that's that's definitely one of the major things I'm taking you know, taking away from this is that there's that massive difference between when it's wet and when it's dry. Well, a massive bit there. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's completely different. You paint it on, it's, it starts blue, it goes into green. <laughs> uh, although, actually, Michael was saying there was, um, I can't remember which paint range, but he, he, he had some troubles with a certain type of paint that when you painted it, it was like, it started off red and then when it dried, it just went pink. Um, yeah, sometimes some of the paints are quite funky uh, with the, the mediums they use and it looks quite different. Um, I had that problem with some of the uh, very old game colors. You had that on a palette and you blended it and you're like, ah, okay, cool. And it would look quite purple mm -hmm. and then you blended it and it turned more grayish and it was really hard to judge where you're going with the wet blending, especially when wet blending. I think if you work with layers, that is even not a big problem if you work just mm -hmm. classical labor layer, you see it more directly what ha what is happening. Mm -hmm. But that's not really a colorful wet and wet technique. <laughs> yeah, I like that a lot, a lot more. I think with the small reflex here. I mean, uh, this this year is a lot more intense because we have the main light reflex on the red area. Uh huh. This is here more on the on the shadow side. But I think with the top piece it works quite well. It's it's interesting because the the you, you you and Michael were saying that nine times out of ten when you get shown a photo by somebody and you get asked for advice that nine times out of ten you're gonna say more contrast. <laughs> and it was like the same thing with that that the this side of the axe. You just looked at it and went, mm, you know what, maybe some more. Yeah, it's 
it's kind of um, tricky to get that point where it's not too much contrast because too much contrast can really rip the model apart if everything right. is like if everything would sparkle like they exploited here everything like you would have all these small highlights that would just drive you crazy because yep. you, you cannot really uh, put a put a focal point if everything is just the same level of contrast but on the other hand if you have not enough contrast going on that will always look uh, kind of kind of dull because you, you see it and you're like, oh, okay sure made it and especially for the that very first impression that one and a half meter away moment I was just I was actually just about to say do you, do you um, when you're painting a miniature so this is something a friend of mine told me a, a couple of weeks ago is that every so often just to, to stop and actually hold the miniature further away from you and just kind of look away and then just look back at it and see see how it looks from a further distance if it does kind of stand out to you yeah <laughs> Uh, every time I'm, I'm just having like a tea in between and making a small break, um, when I'm painting at home, I just put the figure on a, like a high board that I have uh, in my in my apartment, and I just stand there and observe it from different distances and say, okay, okay. And maybe that is not working. Maybe so I would say maybe ten percent of miniature work is observing your own work. Yeah, I, I sometimes have a, a painting jam with a friend of mine, and um, I kind of do that so before before I'm going to paint something. I'll be just holding the miniature, staring at it for like five minutes. Yeah. And he's beaving away, building whatever he's doing. He just looks <laughs> over and he's like, "Are you actually going to do anything?" I'm like, "I am doing something. I'm, it's a very important part of the process. What I'm doing right now." So yeah, Paul, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so far for the x -plane. Um I will just continue with the uh, those non-metal gold parts here uh, off cam because as I said I try to keep them quite simple. Um, and the the last bit I want to show you is uh, for for the weapon is actually this little piece of uh, of uh, wrapping around the is it called wrapping or what is it? It it's not really. Uh, I, I'd call it the handle, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's a, there's a specific, um, yeah, so the, the handle, we have some, like, pieces of cloth around the, wrapped around the, the handle, so, um, or like a bandage. Well, uh, actually, we, we, we said this earlier on, um, because this guy's like a demonic guy, you, you, you can have some fun with it, you, it's, what may have started out as an as a regular axe with some regular leather um, is now different because it's it's yeah. possessed. It's it, it could be leather from some horrible demonic alien beast, which which is bright pink with acid yellow spots. I mean, yeah. Ben's not going <laughs> to do that now, but yeah. it, it, but you it, could have some fun with it. Definitely, um, I will go for something rather classic. So I'll, uh, I'm, I'm mixing some. Uh, it's, old leech purple and some tank brown to give it more uh, uh, burgundy finish. So that's because you've got like the, the, the tank brown which is kind of, it, it's close to like a, a natural reddish leather. Yeah. But then you're just kind of giving it some slight interest with the, with the purple. Yeah, plus the, uh, once I highlight it, the purple will be more visible. Um, when it's dark it kind of vanishes, but here you can see there's quite a... Mm -hmm. Quite a bit purple. As a as a side note, I th I, it's interesting to mention that, that it is uh, leash purple, and don't walk into a games workshop and ask for a pot of light cheaper <laughs> because you will be laughed at in the face by at least two store attendants, and the person behind you sitting painting at a table will start snickering to himself. Um, yeah, you can do a lot to the to the names. <laughs> I genuinely thought it was lychee purple. I do. <laughs> um, I think something that that's also uh, we were talking off camera. Um, the technique you're using here is more more um, something like like the traditional way of painting, almost yeah, it's so. like the traditional layering, and then you're going to smooth with some some smoother transitions with some glazes, right? Yeah, so. Just place the base color, second highlight, third highlight here more around the edges. So that is like the 
very typical layering. Mm -hmm. And now just to smooth the things out, um, thinner glaze with the medium tone, just to soft it out a tiny bit better. So you took some of the tank brown, you added a touch of purple, mm -hmm. and then when you took when you started going into the highlights, you actually took that base mixture, but then added a touch more purple into it, and then went into the white. Yeah. Okay. Uh, because uh, I want the highlights to be even a bit more purple, and sometimes you just if you have mixes like that, you need to enhance the saturation um, when you're doing the highlights. Otherwise, they become a bit chalky in mm -hmm. the end. So that's why I've added also a bit more of the um, of the um, purple. I don't know whether you deliberately planned this, but actually looking at the um, the crab claw, yeah, it's, um, it's 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 like it's similar but not, not quite. Yeah, you know, and I, th I think it, that's good because it could suggest that that maybe that that handle is is part of that organic alive, you know, so, something creepy going on. Yeah. Plus, I we don't introduce a, another color that is. No, distracting. Imagine right. that would be like vibrant green. Yep. That would be just too much, and then then it would end up. And this like comes back clown. to what so, you were saying about keeping it simple yeah. and harmonizing so, and everything. Um, I think so far, uh, been beside the little dot of of purple, which is not so bad because we have red and blue already in the mix. Yeah. But um, we have used some like five colors, so red, black, white. The uh, um, Japanese uniform mm -hmm. and dark seaweed. That's it. So and uh, yeah, the model is still quite colorful, but not too. Yeah. Because you know. these guys they're dark and grim, right? Yeah. You know, but these these aren't the good guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I suppose it's your your perspective. Maybe you think they're doing a good job. Uh, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Um, for the, um, he has some like chainmail loincloth um, behind the other loincloth. Mm -hmm. um, you can see I've painted these quickly off cam, also mm -hmm. there. We won't see the back, so just give it a give it a very gentle brush with it. We were talking about this yesterday, and it's not. It's like your. It, I think. We think the technique is called overbrushing. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like like you, yeah. you, with a dry brush, you're essentially putting your your brush into the paint, and then you're you're wiping all of it off, and then going going to town, just rubbing it over there. But this is your you're keeping a, a small amount of thinned paint on the brush, and just lightly letting those those bumps hit hit the brush, and it's taking it off. Yeah, I, w I was. My boat went for wet. Semi wet dry brushing, but <laughs> okay, okay. I got I got no, no, I, no, I, no. I, I got outvoted. No, you're yeah. the, you're the, you're the slightest <laughs> dude. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely cool with that. That's, that's cool. no, no. We just keep making up names and see where they uh, where they appear. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's it's quite similar to to dry brushing, but as you just uh, as Jack just mentioned, it's uh, just not as as dry and there's there's a lot more control to it. Yeah, it's not as like wild, mm. because to to sit there and actually maybe that's a challenge for you, Ben, to sit there and do loaded brush technique on the chainmail. Yeah, I mean I think that would be a very long video, but um... <laughs> yeah, and afterwards you could visit me in the asylum. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you de you definitely would have the twitching eye face, man. <laughs> um, I think that would, that would be permanently fixed. Then. So now I'm just adding like small white highlights. In the middle of each ring, or on the top of the lower side. And again, it's it's so amazing to me because it's just such, it's something so simple, you know. But it just that little finishing. Oh, it's good. I don't know about you guys listening at home, but to me, this is kind of like I'm, I was saying to Ben yesterday. It's like sitting in a cinema. I need some popcorn. I could, I could very happily watch this film again and again and again. If you if you hear uh, some crunching sound from the back, he got his popcorn. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, grr, grr, grr. It's yeah. when you it's when you see it fly over the screen. It starts hitting you in the head. Where the hell is that coming from? Who did that? Wasn't it? 
So yeah, that uh, that's it actually already for the uh, for the chainmail. Uh, we won't go crazy, but uh, I think that is quite nice to have uh, so like little, these little highlights there in the back, just sparkling. Especially when you imagine that being uh, cl close in the end here with the with the dark cape. Mm -hmm. Oh, the cape! I'm, I'm looking forward to the cape. I mean, so so far, like the, the axe is just incredible, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the cape. All right, so let me finish that part uh, off cam, and um, after that we are um, back for the chest piece. Uh, the the um, chest piece. After that, we're um, back for the uh, front plate of the armor with um, yeah. So it's a little bit of repetition because we have again red armor, some gold, but we have that large bone area. If you know what creature that is, we we would love to know. Yeah, it's uh, Matt uh, ask. Hey, how is the painting going? It's like, yeah, pretty good. What does he have on his head? It's like, um, maybe some kind of not sci-fi dinosaur alien creature. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know. Uh, if you have any idea, let us know. Um, We're gonna think of a name for it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we'll think of a name for this, this the, mysterious the, the big creature. Big Brooks. The, the the color will tell the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll be back for that uh, after I finished the part of the handle. All right. Thank you.